not too long ago, Zumbini Isle was a paradise, home to the happy Zumbinis who shared their land with the moths that pollinated the snozzleberry bushes that produced fruit for the gentle zerbos. But then the blows arrived. They pushed aside the Zumbinis and overran their ancestral home. Reluctantly, the Zumbinis fled, but the blows stayed on, leaving a path of ruin and destruction wherever they went. The once abundant supply of food had dwindled down to nothing, leaving the moths desperate. And so, one day, they left. Eventually, the bloats, having depleted Zumbini Isle of its natural resources, abandoned it in search of new lands to plunder. And it was that day that a daring seagull decided that something must be done. He raced to Zumbiniville, the Zumbini's new home, to share the dreadful news. The brave Zumbinis assembled a scouting party, said goodbye to their loved ones, and set off. The Zumbinis arrived at Zumbini Isle and gasped at the devastation. The absence of moths had broken the chain of life necessary to sustain the plants and zerbals on the isle. The Zumbinis sent a messenger home to explain their plan. In order to reverse the catastrophic damage brought on by the blokes and revive the chain of life, the Zumbinis would have to return to Zumbini Isle. Each one carrying a caterpillar. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumble Bears Let's Play. I'm Kristen and I am so excited to bring a series to you that I absolutely adored as a kid. I loved the Zumbinis. This is Zumbinis Island Odyssey. I hope you enjoy, oh they are so adorable. This is made by The Learning Company who also made other games like Reader Rabbit and so forth. So if you've never heard of Zumbinis, you're in for a treat. And I do actually think they have a Zumbinis game on Steam because I bought it on Steam as well, but I do have the discs. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested, there is a Zumbini game on Steam. Maybe they added the others. I know there's one at least. So if you like, if you like the Zumbinis, you want to go check that out, go get it. Uh, but yes, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. Leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts if you remember the Zumbinis. And subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. I'll be sure to make a playlist where I'll add the other Zumbini games for you guys. Um, if I'm able to get them to run properly and record them, you'll be able to find them uh, in the playlist. All right, let's get started. Enjoy. There's that Zumbini team spirit. Across the treacherous sea they did sail to encounter a catapult made of iron, wood, and nails.
those Zumbinis that miss the catapult ride will get their chance soon. The fearless Zumbinis catapulted onto the cliffs and arrived at a wall with ancient hieroglyphs. The wall protected the towering Tum Tum tree. Its leaves are the nutrition that the caterpillars need. Well done, Zumbinis! The satisfied caterpillars now form their cocoons, and the Zumbinis hoped they would become moths fairly soon. They had repaired the first link of the chain that brought life, but more work would be needed both at day and at night. The Zumbinis arrive at the planetarium to help speed up the metamorphoses of caterpillars into moths. The caterpillars are now in their cocoons. The cocoons are safely stored in the crystals beneath the large clock that divides the two exhibits. The exhibit on the left displays the Earth as it rotates on its axis, while the exhibit on the right shows how the sun moves across the sky when it is viewed from Earth. Each exhibit can show a different time of day or night. For example, if the sun is positioned at the top of the arc, it represents 12 noon. Below the exhibits are several coins, and the number on each coin tells you how many hours it will move the time forward. Place coins into the slots to change the exhibits so that each one will be positioned to match the time shown on the large clock. If you are successful, a hatch above the exhibit will open to reveal the matching time, and a beam of light will shine upon the crystals to complete the caterpillar's metamorphoses. If you pass the time shown on the large clock, you will still transform some of the moths but to change them all, each exhibit must stop at the exact time shown on the large clock.
worry not. The pupae that did not hatch will remain safe in the incubator. But what's this? Not enough moths to continue. More moths will be needed to pollinate the Snozzleberry's seedlings. Congratulations! You've gotten all the Zumbinis up the cliffs of Zumbini Isle. The fearless Zumbinis catapulted onto the cliffs and arrived at a wall with ancient hieroglyphs. The wall protected the towering tumtum -tum tree. Its leaves are the nutrition that the caterpillars need. Well done, Zumbinis! The satisfied caterpillars now form their cocoons, and the Zumbinis hoped they would become moths fairly soon. They had repaired the first link of the chain that brought life, but more work would be needed both at day and at night.
worry not. The pupae that did not hatch will re- The cocoons have cracked open. The moths have flown free to a greenhouse that rests some snozzleberry seedlings. Worry not, the pupae that did. Splendid job! The seedlings must now be carefully planted. So the Zumbinis searched for a nice spot with some shade and happened upon a tree trunk with a spade.
Having successfully pollinated some seedlings, the Zumbinis must now plant them in Arno's garden. Each plant has four parts, root, stem, leaf, and flower. Each part has several possible traits. For example, a plant may have a red, yellow, purple, or blue flower. As usual, Arno is quite demanding and will only allow plants with one trait in common to go in the same hole. For example, if Arno wants the plants sorted by flower, then those with red flowers might be planted in one hole, yellow flowers in another hole, and so on. Try to figure out which part is important to Arno today. Nice planting! Well, I suppose I couldn't have done it better myself. The pollinated seedlings, when planted with care, produced bushels of fruit for the Zerbals to share. But the Zerbals are cautious about which fruit is right, so the Zumbinis must coax them into the light. The Zumbinis need to use the light projectors in the corral to figure out the right kind of snozzleberry to feed each zerbal. Each zerbal is especially formed of two particular snozzleberry traits. When a berry is placed on a projector tray, a large circle with a berry image is cast on the ground. A part of the image, shape, color, or leaf, is highlighted. All zerbals who enter a circle are attracted to the highlighted trait. For example, if the berry image in the circle highlights the color red, then zerbals who enter this circle are attracted to red snozzleberries. If a zerbal enters an area where two circles overlap, then it is formed of both of the highlighted traits. Beware, zerbals will spit out anything they dislike and rejected snozzleberries may not be fed to any other zerbal. Use the light projectors wisely. They will eventually run out of power.
the Zubinis will be back for those herbals that remain. The snozzleberries were eaten. The zerbals were well fed. Onward, Zumbinis, for the barn lies ahead. must be paired together so they can produce offspring when they return to their natural habitat. The spinning wheel shows the desired traits for a set of four baby zerbals. Place one zerbal from each area on the two large stones. The X-ray stones will turn over to show the two traits that each zerbal inherited from its parents. If it has two different traits, then one is stronger and the other is weaker. Each trait from one zerbal is crossed with each trait from the other zerbal to create images of four babies in the gene pool. If the baby zerbal's traits match those shown on the spinning wheel, the soon-to-be parents will proceed through the barn door to begin their new family in their natural habitat. If they do not match, try a different combination of zerbals, but beware you only have so many tries before the gene pool dries up. Hint, the traits have a rock-paper-scissors relationship. Each is stronger than one, but weaker than another. When a stronger trait is crossed with a weaker trait, then the baby zerbal will display the stronger one. Only some... My, my! The Zerbal population seems to be growing! The plan is working! Zerbals! Congratulations, you've matched all the Zerbals. Now they are free to roam happily in the wild. Well done! Each Zerbal released into the wild helps to restore the Isle's natural balance. Across the treacherous sea they did sail to encounter a catapult made of iron, wood, and nails.
Congratulations! You've gotten all the Zumbinis up the cliffs of Zumbini Isle. The fearless Zumbinis catapulted onto the cliffs and arrived at a wall with ancient hieroglyphs. The wall protected the towering Tum Tum tree. Its leaves are the nutrition that the caterpillars need. The wall was no match for the wit of the Zumbinis. The satisfied caterpillars now form their cocoons, and the Zumbinis hoped they would become moths fairly soon. They had repaired the first link of the chain that brought life, but more work would be needed both at day and at night. Worry not, the pupae that did not... have done it again. The cocoons have cracked open. The moths have flown free to a greenhouse that rests some snozzleberry seedlings.
And with the final moth flying away, the brave Zumbinis gather the pollinated seedlings and press onward. The seedlings must now be carefully planted. So the Zumbinis searched for a nice spot with some shade and happened upon a tree trunk with a spade. <laughs> there we go! A perfect set of planting holes. Remember, my garden closes at sunset. never knew that you Zumbinis were such good planters. Uh, nice work. The pollinated seedlings, when planted with care, produced bushels of fruit for the Zerbos to share. But the Zerbos are cautious about which fruit is right, so the Zumbinis must coax them into the light. The Zumbinis need to use the light projectors in the corral to figure out the right kind of snozzleberry to feed each zerbel. Each zerbel is especially fond of two particular snozzleberry traits. When a berry is placed on a projector tray, a large circle with a berry image is cast on the ground. A part of the image, shape, color, or leaf is highlighted. All zerbals who enter a circle are attracted to the highlighted trait. For example, if the berry image in the circle highlights the color red, then zerbals who enter this circle are attracted to red snozzleberries. If a zerbal enters an area where two circles overlap, then it is fond of both of the highlighted traits. Beware, zerbals will spit out anything they dislike.
the Zumbinis will be back for those herbals that remain. The snozzleberries were eaten. The zerbals were well fed. Onward, Zumbinis, for the barn lies ahead. Congratulations! You've matched all the Zerbals. Now they are free to roam happily in the wild. My, my! The Zerbal population seems to be growing! The plan is working! Zerbals! There's that Zumbini team spirit. Across the treacherous sea they did sail to encounter a catapult made of iron, wood, and nails. Fearless Zoom.
Congratulations! You've gotten all the Zumbinis up the cliffs of Zumbini Isle. The fearless Zumbinis catapulted onto the cliffs and arrived at a wall with ancient hieroglyphs. The wall protected the towering Tum Tum tree. Its leaves are the nutrition that the caterpillars need. Fear not, for the Zumbinis that were left behind were the satisfied. The wall was no match for the wit of the Zumbinis. The satisfied caterpillars now form their cocoons, and the Zumbinis hoped they would become moths fairly soon. They had repaired the first link of the chain that brought life, but more work would be needed both at day and at night. Worry not, the pupae that... The cocoons have cracked open, the moths have flown free to a greenhouse that rests some snozzleberry seedlings.
And with the final moth flying away, the brave Zumbinis gather the pollinated seedlings and press onward. The seedlings must now be carefully planted. So the Zumbinis searched for a nice spot with some shade and happened upon a tree trunk with a spade. <laughs> there we go! A perfect set of planting holes. Remember, my garden closes at sunset. Ah! No, no, no! Those plants can't go together. Nice planting! Well, I suppose I couldn't have done it better myself. The pollinated seedlings, when planted with care, produced bushels of fruit for the Zerbals to share. But the Zerbals are cautious about which fruit is right, so the Zumbinis must coax them into the light. Having fed the Zerbals, the Zumbinis march onward, getting ever closer to their goal. The Snozzleberries were eaten. The Zerbals were well fed. Onward, Zumbinis, for the barn lies ahead.
Congratulations, you've matched all the Zerbals. Now they are free to roam happily in the wild. My, my, the Zerbal population seems to be growing. The plan is working. Zerbals! Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay of Zumbini's Island Odyssey. I admit the game is very addicting and I could keep going, but I don't want to make the video too long. I just want to give you a little overview of how it works because you just keep going and keep going and keep going until you bring over all the little Zumbinis and, that, and then this area becomes, you know, nice and green and very, you know, pleasant again. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Remember, you are special and loved. You are never alone. You're always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until the next video, God bless. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye, my friends.